good morning. Thanks for coming to visit in the studio. Um, I'll just show you how I start out my day. Um, usually I, I start out by, I just unwrap the patients that are here waiting overnight. They're kind of like the patients in the hospital with their very maladies. Um, so these are just some baking dishes that are drying and I want them to dry evenly so I cover them up overnight. And then a couple of vases, um, I'm trying to get the moisture to even out so that I can just dip them in some, some slip right now. And they're pretty much ready to go. And then usually I make four cups right away um, and try to get the handles on right away. Um, so I'm sort of bouncing you know, back and forth between a uh, small series of, of pots. So these are already done from yesterday. Um, and so for the workshop um, today, I'll be, I'll be showing you how I make um, an oil can. So um, that'll be next. I've been making these uh, little uh, containers for, for uh, olive oil, cooking oil. Um, for quite a while now, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll be making one for the workshop here. Here's just a couple of older older ones, uh, kind of dusty old ones laying around. So here's, um, I guess, a four-part uh, cooking oil can. And here's another really old one <laughs> Hang, hanging around here. Um, so you get an idea of the kind of variation I've, I've been after over the years. This one I've had for, I don't know, maybe five years, and I keep thinking I, I ought to add a little color, so I put a little a little uh, electrician's tape on there just to see what it looks like. Um, I haven't acted on it yet, but... Um, and then here's a more uh, contemporary one. So um, this will be the kind of thing I'll, I'll be uh, making for you right now. Um, there'll be a little handle that will get attached after the firing um, with some wire. So basically it'll it'll be a bunch of parts. Um, it'll be um, a cylinder, a little bowl that'll be attached upside down, a chimney, a funnel, um, another little cylinder which is a mini version of the the bottom cylinder. They, I want them to have something to do with each other. Um, and then these little lugs, and then this little handle kind of a thing. So usually I make four, four at a time. So I make four, four of these cylinders, four chimneys, four caps, four funnels. Um, and I'll try to vary the, the height and the diameter. I, I don't want to kind of pre-plan it. I mean, I have pre-planned it in that I know how they will, um, could go together. Um, but I like to just have a bunch of parts and then just kind of fool around with them. So I'll go ahead and make parts for one right now. Usually do this about a hundred times. People always ask how the heck do you wedge and I can break it down into what each hand does. So my left hand picks it up and turns it just a wee bit. My right hand pushes down. Oops. So if you can get each hand working on its own, you can figure it out. 
if you only had one hand, you'd be okay too. Either hand would do. Either hand. <laughs> anyway, I do it about a hundred a hundred times. And kind of roll it up. And then put it into kind of a long log. So normally I'd be making four of each of the pieces, but I'll, I'll just make one of each today. So I'll cut this into a bunch of pieces. So here's my cylinder. Bottom. Now I need a little bowl to go on top of that. And then I'll need, let's see, chimney. Chimney feels like more than I need, but oh well. And then for the top of the chimney, I need a little cap. Where's the little cap? And then I need some kind of a funnel. That'll be the spout. Well, there's a spout right there. Look at that. <laughs> well, get more material here. Well, I might save that. I might save that little spout anyway. That looks pretty good, actually. Then later on, um, this will be the little handle. This may be a bit much. A little handle, and then two lugs. Two little lugs later on. I'll make. I'll make those. I'll make them actually out of one piece. One becomes two, but I'll make those later. Make them fresh. I'll throw that away too. So there, I've got all my all my pieces. So now I go ahead and wedge each of these pieces. Okay, so I got all my pieces lined up here. Now normally I have, you know, four of these, four of these, four of these, four of these, four of these. And I would just try to find some uh, shapes in there that I could could love. Um, so I'll just start with a, a bottom piece. It's just a cylinder really. So I'm not really visualizing anything. I'm not I'm not thinking. I'm trying to not think. That's my my big goal is to not think. I mean, I've already decided what I want to make. I just want to make a cylinder that isn't a pot. It's it's just like a tin can or a tube or I'm just trying to get a feeling in a form that I connect with. It's not that I don't have a plan, but I'm trying to I'm trying to let go of really what it looks like and just try to find something in the clay that I respond to and feel feel good about. So I compress that bottom so it won't crack. And even though no one will ever see the inside of it, I wanna I wanna leave a little drawing on that bottom down in there that I love. I don't wanna like it, I wanna love it. Even though no one will ever see it, until it breaks. So I'm just trying to get a, a tube or a cylinder, maybe a barrel, maybe a tin can. Something like that. I don't want to overthink it. I get the water out of the middle so it doesn't crack. So basically I have a cylinder. Um, 
That would count. That might be enough. I'm not in love with the marks on the surface or of the structure of this cylinder, so I'll go over it with a rib. So I like these little rubber Kemper, cheap little Kemper rubber ribs. I try to not touch it too much. I might flatten this top just because I'm going to attach a bowl up here. I could do that later, but I might as well do it now because I know I'm going to do it. I'll give it a little undercut. So I'm trying to not judge it. Now normally I'd have three more, so you know I could I could do it better. <laughs> I want to do it better. <laughs> Cut that off. Okay. So now I'll make the bowl that's gonna go up top here. Now this feels like too much clay, so I'll just go ahead and take a little off. Now it's probably not enough. <laughs> now we'll see. So and I'm just thinking about a little bowl. I'm trying to not think, but you know, I've decided I'm gonna make a little bowl that's gonna go up there. So I'll make it. I won't measure it or anything, I'll just try to feel the bowl. Compress it enough so it doesn't crack. Maybe, maybe you want to even put your little rib in there. I don't usually put my rib in there, but I could bend this. I have one other rib I use that I really like a lot. This one here that Michael Sherrill gave me. It's so sweet. It really can bend. I don't need it but right now, but anyway, it's awfully nice if you need it. So here's my little bowl for the top. So I'm just trying to make it a little bit wider than the diameter up, up here. So you could measure it if you wanted to. It's kind of more fun to guess. So again, it's just like a little bowl or a little saucer. Something like that. If you wanted to measure it, you surely could. You could take something like this even and you know mark it with your thumb and then go, oh yeah, that's too big. That's good. I want it too big. <clears throat> so there's my little cat, my little bowl. And this I try to keep it tight, you know, like dental floss. Alright, now chimney, little chimney. I've got the chimney and a funnel and a cap. So I guess I'll use this for the chimney. This is where um, this is how you put the olive oil into the pot. I've always liked the chimney form. Um, I grew up near a chimney, pretty big chimney at a, a creamery. And um, I find that the chimney form really a beautiful form. Not that what I'm making is necessarily beautiful, but <laughs> I like the opportunity to try, that's for sure. So I'm just trying to feel in sense chimney. I'm not thinking pot. 
I'm not thinking oil can. I'm just trying to be just with this piece. And again, if it were the real situation for me, I'd, I'd, have, I'd be making four of these. So it's a little bit like, um, I don't know if you ever played baseball or softball or something. It's like batting practice. You know, somebody throws you the ball and you try to hit it. You try to hit it maybe over third base or something. So you set yourself up right and then relax into it and then swing like you mean it. And um, that's all I'm trying to do, although I know I just get one crack at it here, which puts a little pressure on me. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but... There's kind of a chimney. It's kind of big for that pot, but I'm trying to not judge it. I'm just trying to be with it and uh, come up with a chimney I love. I don't want to like it. I want to love it. I don't. I don't want to labor over it. Again, like batting practice. I'm gonna labor a little bit more over it. <laughs> I don't quite love it. I can, I'm starting to love it more now. piece would be, I could either make the little cap for this or I could make the funnel. Maybe I'll go ahead and make the little cap. And I leave a lot of material here. I'll leave a ton of material because I may, I may end up using it in this position as opposed to this position. So it's sort of like, um, if you think about going to the lumber yard or something, I want a piece of stock. I don't want to buy a chimney. I want to buy a piece of stock that um, I can turn into the chimney or I can find the chimney in it. So here's the cap. Now this is going to be way too big. It's a lot more material that I need. But that is how it's set up. So I'm going to just go with that. So this little cap is, is really a junior version of the, the, the cylinder there. Meaning I, I want to give it the same sort of feeling. compress it so it won't crack. So all these things, all these pieces really have, have to do two things. They have to do their duty, meaning they, they have to, you know, I want the cap to fit nice. But I also want it to look a certain way. And the looking a certain way is is the harder part. I think this is about the right size. It's maybe a little bit big, I don't know. If I work very, very wet um, when I assemble this, if it's too small, I can make it bigger, and if it's too big, I can make it smaller. So I think it's too big, but it is what it is right now. measure this thing if I wanted. Usually I just like to guess because it's more fun, but if you wanted to measure you could use some calipers or or you could just you do something like this, you know, just kind of roughly get an idea. Oh, it's just right. <laughs> what do you know? Okay, well things are going too well. 
that's always a little disappointing for later because you kind of want to get have things not quite work out right so that you can have to figure out something new okay there's my cap it sure looks too big but oh well looks too big from here but it didn't look too big here okay now the a funnel which I guess you could say it's a spout where the cooking oil is gonna come out of so I'm really trying to think I'm not trying to think spout at all I'm just trying to think funnel 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 cone I like I like cone funnel I mean they're all just really kind of basic shapes So I open it all the way down to the wheel head there. Now this thing is going to be way too big. I know this already. But again, it's like a um, piece of stock from the lumber yard or the hardware store. I just, I just want to have a generous piece of stock that I can cut up or shorten. Start with something very, very generous, and then find what I need in that generous piece of material. So you can see it's way too big on the bottom, but that's okay. I'm, I'm just trying to find my funnel. <laughs> that might be a good name for a children's book. Okay, so that's getting kind of roughed in. A little bit like a ring toss, you know, ring toss game. It has that little feel of the, the post that you try to throw those rings over. I like that when I have a sense like that. I like, I like that association. It's moving away from the ring toss now, but I can bring it back. Getting there. A little bit like a mouthpiece for a, a, like a tuba. Now I like that too. I'm not saying this is good or anything, but I'm I'm liking that it reminds me of something. I like I like that about it. Tuba. It's a little, the top is a little goofy, so I'll see. I don't quite have what I, yeah, maybe this will do. I'll stick my paintbrush in there. Just thin that out a little bit. And it's a little bit at an angle, and that'll actually help it pour better. So my bad throwing will turn into an advantage. I made this 
cutoff wire on 9-11 in 2001 on this very pencil. Of course, I've replaced this many times, but I've had this pencil since that day. It's kind of an odd thing to remember. Now, this has a lot of meat in it, a lot of material. And again, I may use this in this position as opposed to you know, a typical spout, I may use it in this position and make a little lid that fits on here. So I want a lot of material. It's Again, it's like a piece of stock. And I think I have all of my pieces now. Now my job is to um, try to let go and not judge them and um, let them set up. And as soon as they set up, I'll come back and uh, put, it, put it back together. Okay, so these have uh, set up now, so I'm able to work on them. And, um, you know, the way I'm intending to, to do is to... Oh, lucky me, that fits okay. So, I mean, here's the basic, you know, you got the basic parts here. You can kind of see how it could go. Um, but because I work and leave them soft enough, I'm able to kind of fool around with them and maybe find some other, some other possibilities. You know, keeping, keeping, the, keeping the parts wet enough. I can kind of fool around and just, you know, see some other possibilities. Um, I really like this one actually quite a bit. I think this, this offers a lot of possibility. I mean, it's a little bit reminiscent of a, um, what do you call it, like a, a colonial candlestick or something. I mean, you could kind of see how you could, you could discover something that you hadn't seen before. Anyway, I like to fool around with those parts a lot and, um, to see what the other possibilities are. But I'll just go ahead and put it together now. Okay, so I've got all my uh, parts here lined up. Uh, so I'll just start with the bottom and I trim up this bottom a little bit. So I'm not really thinking oil can, I'm, I'm just thinking I'm trying to find a a tube or a cylinder that somehow feels right to me. Now I, I know I'm going to attach this little bowl here to the top of it, so I might as well go ahead and prepare the surfaces to meet. So anytime we join things, um, we want to pre prepare the surfaces to meet. So I've got a flat surface here. I'll have a flat surface on the, the little bowl too. It's just like welding or woodworking or any material. Whenever we join things, we prepare the surfaces to meet, meaning flat to flat, convex to concave, you know, that kind of thing. Ready to go. 
Now, yeah, I want it just a little bigger. That's good. All right. So I could trim this up in a lot of different ways. Um, and again, I'm not really thinking about the whole oil can. I'm, I'm thinking about actually the top of a building like a little um, grain bin, um, or I guess some metal colonial uh, tinware. So I'm not, I'm not really thinking about the pot. <laughs> I'm just thinking about this piece here. And I am aware that how I use the tools, I wanna to be consistent from piece to piece, or part to part, I guess or inconsistent in a way that sets up a tension that is terrific, or hopefully could be terrific. So what, would, what do I mean by that? I mean like speed of the wheel, speed of my hand, similar line quality, um, that kind of thing. This is a little bit like the top of a green building. You have that little hatch at the top. All right, this is a little gummy. So I'm thinking about these edges. Gummy. Now I suppose you could actually you could actually put this thing on here and you know mark it and then cut it, but I just kind of like to guess it's just a little bit more fun. So actually it helps to leave these on here. So I'll just go ahead and cut that where I where I think it would go. It's somewhere in there. Okay. I probably got it too small. All right. Oh, so I'll work out okay. So I want to prepare this surface to meet this surface now. So, back. Whoa, it's a little gummy. Prepare this surface to meet. Mm -hmm. right. This feels a little bit like a what do they call those um, begging bowls? Like, it's just the right scale. All right. But goodbye, it's no longer a bowl. <laughs> okay, so that'll work out okay. No, things are going too well, it's too bad. It's kind of good when things kind of screw up. There's still time. So I'd want to get this on here so it doesn't come off. So that's really enough because I work wet enough, that's enough, it won't really come off. But I'll, 
give it a little bit more. So two things with a seam, I want it to not come apart and not crack. And I want it to look a certain way, and the looking a certain way is really the harder part. Oops. So I'll just try to not touch it too much. Sometimes I use a little tool here. Kind of flatten it a little bit. Alright, so now it looks a little bit like a, one of those little metal green bins. And I kind of like those bins when the edges get beat up a little bit. I like how that looks. You wouldn't want your own green bin to get beat up like that, but I like the way it looks. It tells a little story. So here's how I uh, put it together. Um, one of the one of the things that I realized uh, after I put it together was I really like the plane here and um, really didn't want to add you know another handle up here and then some lugs you know some lugs down here for the wire like I had intended to do and intended to show you. Um, it just feels like it's just sort of too much stuff on there. It's like, it's trying too hard to be something. And I like the, I guess, just sort of the starkness of um, the relationship between these two tubes. In fact, I, re I like this actually better. I, w I wish this wasn't so big now. This has a lot of weight, but I do like, I do like this line across there, but you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe something else up there. I don't know what, but I might just kind of fool around with the idea of um, something else. But I do, I actually do kind of like that uh, without the cap. Um, but this is what I intended to do. So uh, I guess the other thing I would point out that's a little surprising to me is I didn't notice this little, it's like a little burr or a little, um, it looks like a, a mark from a sprue if you do any kind of casting, uh, bronze casting. And I think there's another one too down here and there's one here as well. It's just little pieces of schmutz, you know, that happen during the making of the pieces. And, um, you know, as a student, um, early on, you know, that kind of thing would have really bothered me. It's like, oh my God, there's some, you know, another thing wrong with it. And and now it's like, it's just part of the making. And, you know, you can either just leave them be um, or take them away. And and um, over the years, my inclination is, is to just let, you know, come up with a system of making and then let, let the result be and not try too hard. I just don't want to try too hard. Um, so these seams, you know, I press them just enough so that they're going to um, stay together and not crack. But I, I want them to look a certain way, and I guess that certain way would be um, to try to find a consistency of touch every way I use a tool, you know, whether it's a trimming tool or my hand or a rib, to try and keep that energy or that sense of touch um, consistent. I'm not saying that this is a great pot or anything, but um, that's what I'm trying to trying to do anyway with it. So, okay, I may I, I may just fire it like that, or I may fire it with um, some wadding here, uh, three pieces of wadding. Not not this clay, but you know wadding in the in the wood kiln. So. I may fire it like, like that.
So I'm always thinking about wood. I usually have a one shed full of wood. It's kind of emergency wood. If it's raining or I'm sick or something, I always have enough for two firings in the shed. There's always piles of wood in process. Here's some wood that I think came from a cemetery from the caretaker that was just clearing out some wood. So the pots, pots were resting up in the in the kiln, um, getting ready for the firing. And uh, norm, normally I take about four or five days to load the kiln. Um, and the firing itself is actually fairly fast. Um, I fire with my, my friends Kirk and Jill, um, Jill Frankie and Kirk Lytle. And we usually start, oh, I don't know, sometime after supper, maybe supper time. Um, and then uh, Kirk and later on Jill in the night, they take the night shift, which is really, really remarkable. <laughs> and um, I can get some sleep, which is really kind of a luxury. Um, and then the next day we fire together um, all day um, and finish up, you know, sometime before, before supper. So if the wood's already, um, which it is this time, we've got lots of wood for the beginning overnight and um, also some small wood that is split for the very end of the firing. And that's, that's the part of the firing that I'll, I'll show you. It'll be the, the very end where um, Kirk will be stoking the main firebox and then Jill is handing him wood. Um, and the kiln is really, really hot at that point. Um, nearly, it's nearly done. And then I, I'll kind of come in at the end um, the, usually how it works anyway is I come in um, at the end and I'll be stoking in the main chamber with some small wood. Um, and then Jill usually brings the, some salt and um, we put the salt on a, on a board and just stoke that in. Not much, just a little bit. I'm after uh, a real slight irregularity on the surface. I like a Kind of a dry surface to a little bit more of a wet looking surface as you turn the pot around. So after really kind of a, a varied uh, surface. Um, so anyway that's the that's the part that I'll try to film as it happens and um, it's always a little bit of a rush at the end to get the kiln even in temperature. I don't worry that much about getting it that even but um, anywhere from uh, cone 8 to uh, 10, somewhere in there. So we'll see how it goes. Get some sleep now. <laughs> well, the firing's all over, and um, as, firing, as firings go, it was a fairly uh, Easy, easy firing, and that nobody got hurt. <laughs> we had plenty of wood, nice, nice weather, no, no bugs, no freezing temperatures. Um, so it was a nice, smooth um, firing. So um, now it's just clean up and, and rest and hope, hope for the best. Um, in a way, I don't really even care about the pots right now. Um, I, I love the opportunity so much just to try and. I love the opportunity to ha have a fire, and um, I guess we'll just uh, hope, hope for the best. I'm sure there'll be some disappointments, um, and there'll be a couple of nice surprises as well. So um, we'll look forward to unloading. Well, the kiln is all unloaded, and um, usually I'm actually pretty depressed by the firing when I look at the pots. Usually, I'm, it takes me a couple of days to kind of get over it, and um, 
then I can start seeing, you know, what, what really is here. And um, so a couple of days have gone by, so I've been, sort, you know, sorting the pots. And these are, well, I guess there's about 100 pots here that I selected that um, will have a, a home already. Um, so I know sort of where these things are going to go. Um, so uh, usually my normal thing is I'll take take a pot that's come out of the kiln and um, I'll put a mask on <laughs> and um, I'll have to uh, grind the bottom and then I'll usually take a little piece of diamond uh, paper and sand you know, sand the pot pretty well. I mean, I can kind of feel, you know, where the the rough spots are. Um, so with a wood fire um, and, you know, there's always some irregularity in the, in the clay. So I like to, you know, I don't want you to get cut. <laughs> I don't mind if it's a little rough, but, you know, I really don't, I really don't want you to get cut on your lip or on your hand. Um, or on the foot. Um, so I do, you know, I spend quite a bit of time actually just, you know, running them all in my hand and feeling them and looking at them and uh, just try to get a feel for each each piece as I sand them. And I, I actually really like that time spent with, with each pot in, in that way. And, you know, once, once they leave my hands, they're gone and I, I have no idea uh, you know, really what happens to them, how, where they spend their, their lives. Well, here's that little uh, oil pot that I made with you with the, in the demonstration. And um, I guess my hope for it would be that it would end up kind of like this in somebody's kitchen um, and that it would just be used uh, as an everyday tool uh, to help with cooking and that it would do its duty well um, but would be I guess like a kind of like a favorite tool in a way that on its own you you would enjoy looking at it and discovering new things through use but really I'd like it to just become kind of a everyday thing that just blends into somebody's life and someday it would break and disappear and that would actually be a great a great life for it you know, one of the bad pots made for um, good, good material for rodents here Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm really uh, missing all of you so much. Um, I feel like I'm kind of one of the luckiest people alive to be part of our clay family. And um, I miss you. <laughs> and I look forward to a time where we can we can actually gather again in, in person. And I um, wanted to really thank the Huntington Museum for inviting me. And it's honestly, it's just such a, privilege. I feel so lucky to be a part of this incredible group with uh, Sanam and Justin and Chris and Michael and Naomi. And um, it's been kind of an amazing experience for me. And also a big thank you to uh, Alex Booth and the Booth estate um, and their family that has helped support and uh, encourage all of us to keep working and looking at work and talking about work and um, I can't wait to get back to work myself today. So again, thank you so much and um, I hope to see you in person when, when all this oddness uh, passes. So thank you so much. <laughs>